Well, hello again, everyone. I hope you guys are having a great day. I'm just going to continue uh, on the lines of talking about uh, fluid dynamics. I believe this is going to be the uh, fifth video in a series of several videos. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, in addition to uh, some supplemental videos that I've added uh, to kind of um, emphasize certain points that I may have neglected. All right, so we've uh, basically been working our way toward this uh, Bernoulli effect. And I'm going to go ahead <coughs> and just demonstrate what the Bernoulli effect is in, in a physical sense or qualitative sense. And you can actually see it. And then we'll go ahead and talk about its significance in, in uh, respiratory care, uh, biological sciences, um, and, and even you know talk about uh, some of its other applications in, in, in the other sciences. Because it is a profoundly important principle. Uh, again, these are the, this is a, one of those principles that is ultimately derived <coughs> excuse me, from the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, again, I'm not really going to cover the, the formulae involved in, in calculating the Bernoulli effect because there are various formulae, they're very, uh, they're very complicated, they involve a lot of calculus, a lot of integration, and if you're not really good at integral calculus, uh, I would include myself in that category, it, it'd be very difficult to uh, um, quantitatively discuss the Bernoulli effect, so we're going to just qualitatively discuss it and, and give you guys kind of the flavor of, of what it's about, and, and at least qualitatively, if we understand it, we can understand its importance. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see this. I just have a piece of paper just kind of hanging down, and we know that, you know, gravity is kind of pulling it down. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow some air across this piece of paper. Now, the intuition is that if I blow air, you know, it's just going to make it go down further, right? That if I blow on it, the air is just going to kind of push it down further. So let's go ahead and see what happens here. Interesting. <clears throat> the paper, instead of being blown down, is blown upward, or it moves upward. This is very interesting, and this is very contrary to what our intuition would say. So let's go ahead and discuss what is actually occurring here. So I'll get to this little guy here in a minute, but let me just go ahead and um, kind of discuss this. <clears throat> so what I have here is I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture similar to the one that we had uh, on the last uh, series of videos as far as the gas flowing through a tube and we are talking about the continuity, the principle of continuity and the energy conservation laws. And it looks something like this and we knew that if I had a flow the one here flowing in, <clears throat> that that flow is going to have to increase V2 over here where it narrows. And the reason that the flow has to increase is because I have a certain amount of gas going in here. We'll just say G1. There's a certain amount of gas, a certain um, number of molecules, moles if you will, and then there's a certain amount of gas coming out. And we know that it, in a system that's constantly flowing like this, this has to equal this. What's going in has to equal what's going out. Because of the conservation of, of matter, you know, it says, look, I can't create or destroy this stuff. I have to account for it. And that is the underlying concept behind the Bernoulli effect are these, um, these, uh, these principles of, of conservation. Okay. So let's just go ahead and discuss a little further what's going on in this stuff here. What's, what's really going on? And what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and erase these little guys here. And I want to talk a little bit about energy. Of course, we all know that energy is, is the ability to do work. Um, you know, work is force applied to something over a distance. That's what work is. And the ability to do that work, to push something, to pull something, whatever, to you know, the, uh, the driving pressure of gas, the ability to do that is, is energy. Energy is, is how, how we do that. And when I talk about a gas or a fluid that's moving, I essentially have, um, I basically have a couple different types of energy. Um, we'll kind of keep this simple. I have kinetic energy, okay? I have potential energy. 
and I have pressure energy. Now, a lot of people uh, often um, take potential energy and um, consider pressure a form of potential energy, which it is. If I have compressed gas in an oxygen cylinder, I open that cylinder up, that compressed gas can flow out, and uh, obviously that's um, energy being released. So certainly pressure is a form of potential energy. But what I'm going to do is I am just going to say, for the sake of this discussion, that potential energy is the chemistry, and that's the chemical bonds, Okay, maybe the covalent bonds of oxygen molecules, covalent bonding of nitrogen. Uh, maybe it's even you know the electron being uh, bound to the nucleus or the the uh, quarks um, uh, being bound together in the protons and neutrons. That's all potential energy to me, at least in this case. And I'm going to say pressure energy is separate. So really, what we're talking about here, because we're not going to be using. Um, you know, potential energy. We're really talking about kinetic energy and pressure energy. So, as this flows, this gas flows into here, it has a certain pressure. Okay? And as it flows through here, there's a certain pressure. Now, kinetic energy is the energy of movement. So, let's just analyze kinetic energy first. So, right here, I have a certain kinetic energy. Let's just say that there is one unit of kinetic energy here. Now as this flows through here, what happens? We know it speeds up. The gas flow speeds up. So the kinetic energy is going to increase, right? I'm going to have increased movement, increased velocity. I have increased kinetic energy. <clears throat> and so now maybe I have two units of kinetic energy. But what does the conservation of energy tell us? that I cannot pull energy out of my ass. So where, oh where, did that extra energy come from? Did we just make it up? Did it just materialize out of nowhere? No, what happened was, for this gas to speed up, I stole energy. I robbed Peter to pay Paul. I took energy from my pressure and I added it to the kinetic. So what that means is, remember there's a certain amount of pressure here, P1, and a certain amount of pressure here, P2. What happened was the pressure had to decrease as the flow increased through this smaller tube here. Remember, I can't take energy, I can't make or destroy energy, I cannot pull it out of my ass. I had to get it from somewhere, and what I did is I took it from the pressure. So as the flow increased, the velocity increased, my kinetic energy increased, my pressure decreased. So kinetic energy increased, pressure decreased. And that is exactly <clears throat> what you saw on this piece of paper, is I blew across this, the gas flow over here increased. After it left my mouth, it was a certain velocity. It hit there and it started flowing across this, contacted the sur surface, it increased its velocity, and where did it get the energy to do that? Well, it got the energy from the pressure, so the pressure decreased on top, but the pressure down here, because remember, we're in an atmosphere, there's pressure everywhere, the pressure down here was now higher than the pressure up here, and so it pushed this up like that. And that's actually one, just one of the principles that goes into the, the concept of lift of an airplane. If you could imagine this is the wing, and the airplane's moving this way, Air is going to flow over that wing, and as it flows over that wing, the pressure is going to decrease on top of the wing, and I'm going to have a force in the atmosphere pushing up, and that's going to help provide lift for the aircraft. <clears throat> All right, so I told you I'd get back to this little guy here. This is what we call a Bernoulli tube or a Venturi meter, and I don't actually have one, but I'm just going to show you how it works. Very similar to this here, I have a gas flowing through here, it constricts down, so what would we expect? Well, we would expect right here, we would expect the flow to increase, my kinetic energy increases, but we would expect the pressure to decrease. 
So what you'll see is um, you have a little tube here and have some water. If the pressure was equal throughout this whole tube, the level on the water would be equal. But what we see is when we start putting flow through this, we see something that kind of looks like this. Let's see if I can draw it properly here. See something that kind of looks like this. So I have a water level here and a water level here. So what I have is I have an unequal water level. I have increased pressure here, right? My pressure is higher here, so it's pushing down on that tube of water, that column of water with more pressure. My pressure here is decreased and it, that water is in kind of being pulled up. So there's that disparity, and that's exactly what you'd see if you were to actually use one of these Venturi meters, is increased pressure here, decreased pressure here. And again, it's a raw Peter to pay Paul situation that if the kinetic energy increases, the, the potential energy in the form of pressure has to decrease. That is the Bernoulli effect. And the reason that we care is something called the Venturi effect, which is a special case of the Bernoulli effect, or the Bernoulli principle. And I'm going to talk about the Venturi effect in a video all, um, all its own, because it is a very important principle when we talk about entraining gases and fluids and uh, using air entrainment masks and things of that nature. All right, guys. Have a great day. Thanks.